How do you make a country full of fjords easy to travel through? Norway's stunning scenery has always been a challenge for travelers. For centuries, navigating its glacial valleys was tough. But now, huge infrastructure projects are making this beautiful land more accessible. A new coastal highway is set to connect seven cities, cut out ferry crossings, and slash journey times in half. Even more exciting, a one-of-a-kind sea route is in the works. The world's first full-scale ship tunnel. How will they pull this off? Let's dive in and find out. The Stad Ship Tunnel is a planned canal and tunnel to bypass the Stad Peninsula in Vestland County, Norway. This area is one of the most exposed on the coast, with no outlying islands to shield it from harsh weather. It's been one of the most dangerous sections of Norway's coastline. If completed, it will be the world's first full-size ship tunnel. The surrounding waters, called the Stadhavet Sea, are the most windswept part of the nation's coastline, stormy about 100 days a year. Ships often wait days to pass through. Currents from the meeting point of the North Sea and the Norwegian Sea make navigation even harder. Since World War II, 33 people have died in maritime accidents in the Stadhavet Sea. According to Visit Norway, Vikings used to drag their boats over the peninsula just to avoid this dangerous sea. We've built tunnels for boats before, like the one on the Canal du Moody in France, but the Norway project is on a whole different level. Unlike the small tourist boats that navigate the Canal du Moody, this tunnel is designed to accommodate much larger vessels, including cruise ships. To give you an idea of its scale, the tunnel measures 37 meters high, 26 and a half meters wide, and 12 meters deep. It'll be capable of handling ships weighing up to 16,000 tons. This ambitious project addresses a problem that has persisted for more than a thousand years. Since the time of the Vikings, boats have faced a treacherous journey crossing the Stadhavet Sea. The tunnel offers a safer and more efficient route, revolutionizing maritime travel in the region. The surrounding waters, known as the Stadhavet Sea, are the most windswept part of Norway's coastline. It's stormy around 100 days a year, often causing ships to wait days before they can pass through. The currents, formed where the North Sea and Norwegian Sea meet, add to the navigation challenges. The first proposal for a tunnel appeared in an article in the Nordre Bergenhaus Amstadad newspaper in 1874. Shortly after, the same newspaper suggested a railway tunnel across the peninsula, allowing boats to be raised onto wagons and hauled across. This would have cost only half as much as the tunnel. In 2011, a report by Det Norsk Veritas and the Institute for Research in Economics and Business Administration for the Norwegian Coastal Administration concluded that a tunnel would not be economical. They evaluated two sizes, a small tunnel costing 1,264 million krono and a large one costing 2,027 million kroner. The report found that the utility, including saved waiting costs for shippers, had a present value of 304 million kroner for the small tunnel and 314 million kroner for the large tunnel, with saved accident costs of 67 million kroner and 76 million kroner respectively. However, a similar report from 2007 had concluded that the tunnel would be economical, with the Coastal Administration attributing the difference to new and better data. In 2013, the tunnel was included in the National Transport Plan for the first time, with 1 billion kroner set aside from the budget. The planned tunnel will be 49 meters high and 36 meters wide, able to handle ships up to 16,000 tons, including the Hurtigruten and Coastal Express ships. The water inside the tunnel will be 12 meters deep and will reduce journey lengths by 56 kilometers. Two routes were proposed for the tunnel. One, 1,800 meters long, would run from the Ied farm at the inner part of Malchforden through the Mansaitite Isthmus to Kochpolen, the narrowest but innermost part of the peninsula. The other, slightly longer option, would stretch from the Scarbo farm to the Flode farm through the central part of the peninsula. The second option was selected for construction. Newt Samset, a project management professor at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, criticized the decision, claiming that modern vessels can navigate the sea safely and that the cost-benefit analysis is negative. In March 2021, the Norwegian Ministry of Transport and Communications approved the project preparations, with the Norwegian Coastal Administration expecting construction to start in 2022. Terj Andrasen, the temporary project manager, stated that construction is expected to start in 2023 and estimated to be completed by 2025 or 2026. The tunnel may open by 2025. 
Due to the thick nice rock requiring tunneling, a drill and blast process is proposed. Materials will be delivered by sea due to the inadequacy of local roads, and a rock wall or possibly cofferdams will be used to keep the tunnel free of water during construction. Approximately 3 million meters of rock will need to be removed. The tunnel's entrances, designed by the Norwegian firm Snoheta, will feature rough rock walls to blend into the surrounding landscape. Snoheta's designs also include walkways and a new road bridge to enhance views of ships passing in and out of the tunnel. Negotiations for land purchases and the identification of a principal contractor began in April 2021. Several Norwegian and international companies are reviewing information on the project. Bypassing the Stadhavet Sea could be a significant boost for Norway's tourism sector, while other industries and trades would benefit from the safer passage the tunnel will provide. The construction of this tunnel is not just a massive engineering feat, it also promises economic benefits by enhancing maritime travel safety and efficiency in the region. This project addresses an extreme challenge that has always required an extreme solution. Historically, the Vikings managed the perilous journey across the Stadhavet Sea by physically dragging their boats over land. However, modern engineering now allows us to go through the land, reducing a two-hour trip to just about 12 minutes. This dramatic reduction in travel time is not only convenient but also significantly safer, making it an attractive alternative for various industries relying on maritime routes. Although contractors are yet to be appointed, the plan for the tunnel is already in place. The upper section will be excavated first, using techniques similar to conventional road tunneling including underground drilling and pallet rigs. Norway has a wealth of expertise in this area, as the country is home to over a thousand road tunnels. This experience will be invaluable in ensuring the successful execution of the project. Construction is likely to start simultaneously at opposite ends of the peninsula, creating two tunnels that will eventually join in the middle. This approach not only speeds up the construction process, but also allows for more efficient management of resources and labor. The construction process will involve drilling through thick, nice rock using a drill and blast method. Given the inadequacy of local roads, material will be delivered by sea, and measures such as rock walls or cofferdams will be used to keep the tunnel free of water during construction. Once the excavation reaches the middle and the two tunnels are joined, the roof will need to be reinforced with concrete for stability. This step is crucial to ensure the tunnel can withstand the pressures of both the rock above and the maritime traffic below. Following the roof reinforcement, service routes will be added to allow for the transportation of excavated material out of the tunnel. The entrances to the tunnel have been designed by the renowned Norwegian firm Snoheta. This thoughtful integration of the tunnel into the natural environment underscores Norway's commitment to preserving its stunning landscapes while advancing infrastructure. To dig out the tunnel floor, temporary bears or cofferdams will be placed at each of the terraced stone entrances designed by Snoheta. These barriers will keep water out, allowing excavation below sea level to proceed. Once the work is fully finished and all services like lighting are installed and functioning, the tunnel will be slowly flooded and the cofferdams will be removed. In total, about 8 million tons of rock will be removed, with some of it recycled for future projects. This amount is equivalent to around 35 of the world's biggest cruise ships. Removing the material from the site is a complex task due to the lack of a decent road infrastructure around the peninsula. Barges are expected to play a key role in transporting the excavated rock. As with any groundbreaking project, extensive research and testing were conducted to ensure feasibility before approval. This included building a mock-up of the tunnel at a test pool in Trondheim. Researchers used this mock-up to simulate various conditions and found that the vessels could safely and stably pass through the real tunnel without hitting the walls. A digital model of the tunnel was also created and used with the simulator to visualize how ships would approach it and to see how traffic could be managed. Based on this testing, a traffic light system will be implemented, allowing five ships to pass through each hour, with a minimum distance of 400 meters between them. However, this system could be flexible, with smaller vessels potentially allowed to pass side by side, further boosting capacity. Recent events in the Suez Canal underscore the importance of thorough testing. When things go wrong on critical shipping routes, the trade implications and the resulting internet memes can quickly spiral out of control. With all preparations now complete, all eyes will be on Norway once construction begins. This ambitious project is expected to be completed by 2025. If this Mission Impossible succeeds, it'll only be a matter of time before other countries adopt similar ideas.
While the coastal highway is far bigger and more expensive, this project is no less of an achievement. It may have taken a millennium to figure out, but building a whole new kind of infrastructure is rarely smooth sailing. The tunnel through the Stadthavet Sea will not only revolutionize maritime travel in the region, but also serve as a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. As Norway embarks on this unprecedented journey, the world watches with bated breath. The successful completion of this project will mark a significant milestone in engineering and pave the way for future innovations in infrastructure. If Norway can overcome the challenges and complete the tunnel, it'll set a new standard for maritime travel and infrastructure projects worldwide. We're committed to releasing two videos a week. Be sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visionary builds.